Today, we celebrate the 33rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. We invite you to stand and greet our celebrant, Bishop George, and join together and say number 698. We gather together. That's number 698. Together to bless the Lord's blessing, he chastens and hastens his will to make known the wicked oppressing, thou seest from his chesting, sing praises to his name.
We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.
those who are being consecrated. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer offerings of sins. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. chapter 10, and we hear how, you know, in the, in the in, in, um, um, apocalyptic literature, this kind of literature, this genre of literature, was often used by people who were oppressed to, uh, to uh, communicate something, uh, to reveal something, right, and, and exhorting them to hold on into faith, but, but we hear how this final time is going to come with destruction, and maybe Maybe a couple of weeks ago, we thought we were living in the end times, right? In terms of that, right? I'm thinking about Pat and Abby who were on a cruise, and they had 45-foot waves uh, for that cruise during that time. So I'm thinking that that probably felt a little end times in the too. But maybe there's something about our, our lived experience that, that speak to us a little bit about this. But then listen to what happens. It says that that uh, that the wise will will be part of the uh, uh, of uh, of the people who are who are raised up. There's a there's a wonderful ending to this. In other words, there's a poetic ending to this uh, in many ways. And I do think that that sometimes when we when we hear these scriptures, uh, it, it follows a particular uh, it follows a particular formula in terms of 
end time writing, um, but that it is always about God coming to us and, and God being our, our center, God being our, our uh, strength in the midst of those storms, in the midst of all of this. Von Balthasar, who is a theologian, he says that, that perhaps we're given this apocalyptic literature uh, to uh, underscore for us the importance of the decisions uh, that we make for God and God and how we un understand God's decisions for us. And I think maybe that's what some of these readings are. We hear this at the end uh, in this cycle, uh, the end of the, uh, of the uh, liturgical year. Um, in Advent, we are always, given you'll hear this in, in not next week, the week after, right? We are always called to repentance. And in this, uh, in this year, we heard from, the, uh, the, uh, from Mark about uh, uh, Saint, uh, John the Baptist calling us to repentance. And the reasons that we're called to conversion and repentance is to transform our lives by the experience of God's love for us throughout the liturgical year. And hopefully we've done that. Um, and and so, so we're given these readings maybe as the year draws to an end. Last week in the Gospel and the readings, we heard about giving away of last things, a last measure of flour, right, a last measure of oil, uh, the, the two mites uh, that the woman, the, the woman had, giving those last things away maybe. Today we hear about the end times, we hear about things coming to a conclusion and that when the Son of Man uh, comes, that they'll, it'll come with, with great power and glory. And in fact, all creation will groan for that coming, right? And things will, will start to happen. And I was thinking that maybe we're given these readings as we prepare for Christmas to help us focus on a different message, right? To help us focus on what's important. When I was growing up, um, Monsignor uh, uh, Simons was our pastor, but we had Father Nugent who was a uh, Vincentian priest. And he was, uh, he was Bishop Sheen's secretary. And so Bishop Sheen was a great orator. Maybe some of you heard of Bishop Sheen, but he's still on TV. We used to have to watch him. Uh, I, never, I, never knew, I never knew what he was saying, quite honestly. But, but, uh, but he had great flair. And, you know, and he would, uh, and he was, uh, so anyway, uh, Father Newton, my father, uh, whenever he saw Father Newton uh, celebrating Mass, uh, would just moan, because Father Newton's homilies were about a half an hour. And no one really could know what he was saying, but he would yell. Um, I remember in the sacristy, we were vesting, and we, as altar boys, had to help the priest as we hold the signature for them, and they kiss the abbess. And he turned around to us, and it was a high mass, so there were four of us. There were two acolytes, there was a crucifer and a thoroughfare. And we were, oh, I don't know, maybe in seventh grade, and he turned around and he said, yes, if we knew what amen meant, and of course, none of us did. And uh, so we weren't looking at it, and he yelled at us, and he screamed, it means so be it, right? And you could hear it reverberate throughout the church. <laughs> and then Tommy was going to wet himself. Thank God we had a fantastic song, right? Was just, was, uh, talking about the coming of God with power and might. But he would often preach our retreats, uh, our parish retreats. And he would ask us to focus on the four last things. And that would be heaven and hell, uh, 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 heaven, hell, death, and judgment. And maybe a little bit, we don't talk much about that, I think, sometimes in progressive Christianity. But really, these, this, these readings today may speak a little bit about some of those to us. How is it that we think about these things? How is it that we think about ourselves? As far as I know, we are the only creatures which are aware of our eventual non-being, right? And so sometimes we're faced with sometimes existential kinds of crises. How is it that we think about who God is in our life? This coming season of Christmas has already begun. We are exhorted to, uh, to extravagances, right? And so and if you buy this, you'll get the girl of your dreams. Or if you drive this car, right? You'll, right? All of these things. And, and there's nothing wrong with that, right? There's nothing wrong with that. Unless we lose the meaning of the season, unless we forget, right, what is the reason that we celebrate this. And maybe, as von Balthasar says, these, uh, these uh, apocalyptic literature, these readings are given to us to think about who God is in our life and to think about how God thinks about us. There's a wonderful prayer that was written by uh, Michael Niebauer. And in the United States, or in recovery, it's called the serenity prayer. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I, I cannot change and the courage to accept the things that I can. And perhaps maybe that's what some of these readings are about today too, right? Is to think about ourselves in the moment in relation to God and each other. And what is it in that moment that we can change and can't change? 
we heard in the psalm, which I love, right? That, uh, or in the second read, uh, in, this, uh, in the read from Hebrews, about how God, uh, Christ's love for us once and for all, redeemed us from, from our sins, and, and there's no there's no need for that anymore, right? But maybe these readings that we have today are for us to think about what's unfinished in our life. What is it that maybe? What is it that maybe by virtue of understanding more deeply how this God loves us and our love for God moves us in real ways? What needs to be finished in our life? What is it that we need to do? What dimensions of forgiveness have we not have we withheld or not received? What what dimension of our, of our lives in relationship with others maybe needs to be attended to? What are the important things? What are the four things in our life that are going to lead us to a reasonable contemplation of of judgment, heaven, and hell? And it really it really has a lot to do, I think, with how how God continually, through His living Word, speaks to about His love for us. We're never simply left alone with the end of the apocalypse or the, or the end times. What we're left with is this God who comes to call all of us to be with him, right? And so we as Christians, we pray for that moment, right? When we meet our God face to face, when every tear shall be wiped away. And so that life for us is not ended, but simply changed. And so we pray for that. We pray for that. We pray almost that it doesn't happen too soon, right? <laughs> when I was receiving communion, they held a uh, Saint Dominic Savio up to us, who I think died after he received communion. And we all we all prayed for that, but not until we had our party, right? So, so like he said, "Oh God, make me a saint, but not yet, right?" But there's something in these readings that we have today that bring us to an understanding that. That, 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 that we as human beings individually, our lives are going to end. It's not always something we want to think about. I get that. I really get that. But in these readings and in the context of who Christ is for us and who God is for us, maybe we can invite some of that thinking. Maybe we can risk thinking about that. Maybe we can really, uh, maybe, maybe take a moment and use some of this to evaluate our lives, especially with the hustle and bustle of what's coming in the next couple weeks. How is it that we organize our understanding of the tremendous love of God in our lives in real ways that move us to be transformed by that love, that require us to appreciate God in the moment, and maybe God in the moment that is revealed to us in the person who's sitting next to us or right in front of us. That's how I think these readings focus us. They, they come with almost laser-like focus to say, pay attention to these things. Pay attention to these things. What is important in your life? We know this Matthew tells us that wherever our treasure is, that's where our heart is. Matthew tells us, I think uh, next, uh, in, in the next cycle of Matthew is the gospel for us, but he reminds us that the kingdom of God is already here and we should behave that way. And maybe that's what these readings are trying to focus on. Think about that. Think if we come here on Sundays and, and we, uh, we, 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 we spend this wonderful time with each other and we refresh our souls and, and, and then we leave here. How does this follow us through? During the week. How does what we do here together as the people of God move in real ways, right? I'm always saying if you could see me on the parkway, you wouldn't think that I had any any kind of relationship with God, right? Especially, especially when my face gets rubbed. And sometimes at my collar on, you should see me, right? But, but in many ways, it's in those small moments, right? It is in those small moments. It is God in the moment. Um, Friar Lawrence of the Resurrection wrote a wonderful little book called The Practice of the Presence of God. And he reminds his, uh, he's writing to an aristocratic woman who is looking for God, and he, he continually repeats the same thing, that God is only in the moment. God is only right here for us. And, and I think about that, especially as us as Christians, received, as, uh, received in community. Sometimes God, God is next to us. Some, sometimes God is in the person right across from us. Sometimes, sometimes for us, we represent Christ by a smile or a handshake. Brother Gigi and I, every Sunday, are down at the county jail. And we try, through the, through, the, through the gospel at Mass, to build a sense of community, to build a sense of reminding the people who are there that they won't always be there. That's what these readings are reminding us of, that we won't always be here, that God has in store for us much more than we could ever imagine, right? And so when we come together and we are nourished by this word of God, it is for us as Christians to enflesh that in real ways. That's what we're going to celebrate in six weeks, that God, God comes to us in the skin of a human, right? And so, so that because of that, you and I then need to think about how we enflesh God, how we put skin on God in the real world as well, right? And so, so that maybe these readings help us today to focus on, on the real meaning of things and that, that it is God only in the moment. 
Um, John, John the 23rd had a sense of that. In, 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 he used to use the word abundanza, right? Where's our mind? Right? Abundanza. There's always enough. There's always enough. Sometimes we get so frightened that we cling on to what we have thinking that this is all, but there's not. And we as Christians know that. We absolutely know that, right? So, so as we gather together, as we prepare for next Sunday, the Feast of Christ the King, and move into the season of Advent. Advent from the Latin means to move towards. Advenient, right? And so, so what we're asked to do today is to prepare ourselves for that moving forward, right? To, to get rid of some of those things, to be finished with things that we know we have to be finished with. To, to make that apology or to receive the grace of, of, of the apology from another. To find in real ways uh, moving in forgiveness and tolerance and love for each other. To build within ourselves a sense of, of God's love so that it moves into the community in real ways. And so, so all of us are called to that. Today, we're gathering our food baskets. Your generosity, your kindnesses move forward in this community in very real ways. You, you do what the scripture asks. You enflesh God's love in the world in very real ways. And so, so, uh, so as we gather together, my, my mother used to say to me, she used to say, be careful because we really don't take anything with us, right? When we leave here, right? Uh, and maybe what we take with us is, is, uh, is, is the memory of, of, of how other people remember us loving, right? Nothing else really goes with us. St. Francis reminds us of that all the time. So as, as, as we move forward uh, in this time of Advent, as we move in this season of preparation, these readings about the end times may speak more to us today about needing to, uh, maybe needing to be finished with some things that weigh us down so that we can focus on really what's important for us. So let's continue in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As a people of faith and a stem, profess that faith as we say, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. We God not made, but only the Father, through all things are made. For us, and for our salvation, we came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary. In the name of Amen. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, and fulfilled the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As a people of faith, as a people called into existence by God's love, we offer our prayers and petitions in confidence of God and the Spirit and Together to solve the problem which 
afflict their countries. Let's pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those who are sick in mind, body, or spirit, for the depressed, the lonely, the Lord will heal them. Are there any are there any who we especially would like to pray for? We pray in a special way for uh, Kathy, our uh, parish council uh, president, who uh, suffered a, uh, a head injury uh, that God will uh, bring her healing. We pray for Chris, who is recovering from brain surgery, and we pray for her health. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord. For those who sleep in the dust of the earth, Staff Sergeant Rayvon Battle Jr., who died this week in Afghanistan, are there any others who have died that we should lift up to the Lord? I would like to remember Father Xavier, who served uh, at St. Mary's in Holtznick for many years. He was a fabulous priest and a wonderful man. He missed. For Father John Cavanaugh, the Society of Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Most high and glorious God, we bring you our prayers and petitions, those which we've spoken aloud, and those in the depths of our heart. We ask you to hear and answer them if they be for our good, for we make them in the name of Christ your Son. Amen. 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 If our gifts are gathered and prepared, let us all join with one another and sing number 656, Christ be our light. That's number 656. Before the
acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands to the praise and glory of the name, for our good and good of all the church. Lord God, may the gifts we offer increase our love for you and bring us to eternal life. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Today we'll pray the Eucharistic prayer, Jesus, the compassion of God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is truly right to give you thanks. It is fitting that we offer you praise, Father of mercy, faithful God. You sent Jesus Christ, your Son, among us as Redeemer and Lord. He was moved with compassion for the poor and the powerless, for the sick and the sinner. He made himself neighbor to the oppressed. By his words and actions, he proclaimed to the world that you care for us as a father cares for his children. And so with all the angels and saints, we sing the joyful hymn of your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power, God of might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise. And handing the cup to those he loved, he said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. We remember how you loved us to your death, and still we celebrate, for you are with us here. And we believe that we will see you when you come. Lord, perfect, perfect your church in faith and love. 
together with the patriarchs of Alexandria, Antioch, Constantinople, Jerusalem, and Rome, I, your unworthy servant, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and all those your son has gained for you. Open our eyes to the needs of all. Inspire us with words and deeds to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Keep our service of others faithful to the example and command of Christ. Let your church be a living witness to truth and freedom, to justice and peace, that all people may be lifted up by the hope of a world made new. Be mindful of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of Christ. With these and all the dead whose faith only you can know, lead them to the fullness of the resurrection and gladden them with the light of your face. When our pilgrimage on earth is complete, welcome us into your heavenly home, where we shall dwell with you forever. There with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the apostles and the martyrs, St. Francis and St. Clair, and all the saints, we shall give you praise and give you glory through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever.
to the table of the Lord to receive the body and blood of Christ. Our song for communion is number 657, We Are the Light of the World. Let us all join together and say number 657. Blessed are they who are poor in spirit, theirs is the kingdom of God. Bless us, O Lord, may thy Amen. Yeah. 
wrapping them, decorating the boxes. The woman is coming around 3 o'clock, so any help that we could get between now and then to make sure everything is finished would be very appreciated. It's in the so, and thank you to everyone who bought things in. Thank you. Just make a left when you go out of the chapel. It's right on the stage if you want to help assemble some of that. We've adopted eight families, and so we're giving baskets to uh, eight people uh, who, uh, who need that. And then Bloomfield Social Service is going to come and collect that for us. Uh, bless you. And then through Advent and Christmas, well, we, which is what we always do, we we, um, we gather, uh, we have a given tree, we gather things for the poor and those who need it. So, uh, so you're always very generous. You really are always very, very generous. Um, uh, next week is the Feast of Christ the King, and then we start Advent. So on uh, uh, in the parish notes, if you saw that in the bulletin, there was a request that for our preparation for Advent, we used to, when I was growing up, the parish priest would come and visit us. It was, uh, my mother called it the block collection. And then they came for our little extra. I'm not going to come for that, right? But, uh, but if you think about having mass in your home on a Tuesday night, on a Tuesday, um, it might be a good way for you to invite your neighbors, other family or friends, other, uh, to, uh, to celebrate uh, the, the uh, uh, Christ board in our hearts. Uh, and so, so we'll... Uh, uh, Start at seven and be finished by nine, and uh, we can have a meal together and, and discuss the, the scriptures. So I thought it might be a nice way for us to, to celebrate uh, in, our, in our homes uh, the fact that uh, Christ is central to our existence, right? So think about that, right? I won't, I won't, I don't, I don't come looking for dust or anything. Right? So, you know, that's right? <laughs> so uh, I think other announcements. Uh, next Sundays or last Sunday, so we may have a parish brunch. Oh yes, our parish brunch. Yes, our parish brunch. So it's a potluck brunch. Uh, we like to eat, so bring what you can, right? <laughs> That's a good one. And Thanksgiving Day Mass is it too? Yes, yes. Thanksgiving Day Mass will be at 10 o'clock here. Please come and join us uh, and give thanks to God for all the many blessings. And, and then after Mass, we'll we'll have some dessert early, maybe yeah. some pumpkin pie and cider, right before you go home to your. Uh, to, uh, we're having tofurkey, so just, uh, so, uh, <laughs> Let us bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. 
May Almighty God keep you from all harm and bless you with every good gift. Amen. May he set his word in your heart and fill you with lasting joy. Amen. May you walk always in his ways, knowing what is good and right until you enter your heavenly inheritance. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Um, at 5 o'clock today, our parish is participating in the interfaith uh, Thanksgiving celebration at Christ Church. All of you are welcome to participate in, in that with us. It's, uh, it's our Jewish brothers and sisters and our, our Protestant brothers and sisters. And we're, uh, as far as I know, we're the only Catholic represented there. So let's come out in force. <laughs> no, just joking. Uh, but, uh, but please join us again. It's a beautiful, uh, it's a beautiful liturgy of song and um, and it's just beautiful. The cantor from the temple, Beth Mir, to me, her voice is like an angel. It's unbelievable. So, um, uh, so um, the mass descended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thank you, God. Let us all go forth, join together, and sing number 605. Those mountains may fall. That's number 605.